Today is the seventh day of the seventh month of 2020. 30 years ago today, there was the first Saba Saba rally. Mm -hmm. And um, the Saba Saba rallies basically were uh, started in that clamor and push for multipartism, for a more open society after years of uh, single party rule. And there were very many politicians and very many people who basically just came together and were pushing for that conversation. The notable names at that point were Kenneth Matiba, Charles Rubia, Jaramo Ginga Odinga and others. And then there were those who were working in the background at that point who were just, you know, maybe younger people that were working in the background. Uh, among them, people like uh, Njeru Kathangu, uh, people like uh, Edward Oyugi, Ngodowa Kariuki, Kariuki Gadithu, uh, George Anyona, uh, and others. We are joined this morning by one of them. He uh, likes to be referred to as Mtumishi Njeru Kathangu. So Njeru Kathangu is also a former MP for Onyenjes. He's currently the Ford Asili Secretary General. Uh, that's the Forum for the Restoration of Democracy. Remember, Ford, before it started splintering, was the one, the Forum for the Restoration of Democracy. And the word restoration of democracy was apt at that point. Because the feeling at that point was that we had basically veered off the path of democracy. I needed to come back to democracy by allowing multipartism, by allowing uh, other voices to be heard as well. Um, multilateralism in everything that we were doing and more open and just society. Looking back at those 30 years since that first, uh, first Saba Saba rally <coughs> is what we'll be doing now. And Jero Katango, good morning. Good morning, sir. Asante I also say to hello to all the country because here we are commemorating a great day. Mm. Indeed. Welcome to the Situation Room. And um, thank you so much. In the room this morning is C.T. Muga Nduoko and Wanjiro Gekonyo. Very good. Jero, let's just head back into those 30 years. At that point, yes. when you were organizing this first uh, <coughs> rally, just quickly yes. just give us what was happening? How did you come up with the idea of having this rally on this particular day? Was it a coincidence, for example, that it was on mm. the seventh day of the seventh month? Yeah. Well, the first thing that uh, Kenyans must remember is Saba Saba was really a culmination of a struggle and clamor for multipartism that had started in 1969, immediately after the burning of Kenya People's Union, which had been started by Jaramogi Oginga Ondinga. When Kenya, therefore, became a de facto one-party state. And uh, then immediately after that, you see so many things happening, detentions and arrests. And again, we come up to 1982, when the same Jaramogi Oginga Ondinga and George Anyona tried to form a political party called the Kenya African Socialist Alliance, and it was denied. And when it was denied, they were also detained. And immediately after that, about the second day, the, the Kanu changed the constitution to make Kenya a de jure one-party state, making Kanu the only party in this country. Mm -hmm. From then, the struggle intensified, and it saw some of us actively involved in trying to push the government to change the constitution so that Kenya could be allowed to reintroduce the plural politics. And uh, it is because of that struggle that you find pockets of Kenyans rising up and uh, the then more in government arresting everybody, including what they call the more Kenyan more Kenya parents of 1985, 86, 87, 88. And uh, after that, then we came with a multi party now movement that is starting clamoring for the reintroduction of multi party politics. It is within that program mm. that Kennedy Matiba and uh, Charles Rubia uh, stood out. And announced the multi party now in 1990 after the death and murder of Ouko, mm -hmm. and also announced the Saba Saba rally. Saba Saba here to imitate what you may call the Tanzanian uh, 
uh, Tanu formation, mm. which was done in 1954, and the party was uh, formed and declared on the 7th of July, 1954. And that is what they were trying to tell Kenyans, that we are forming something here on the Sabasaba, and we want all of you to come and witness it. That day we were going to announce the formation of the Kenya National Congress. Again, taking the spirit of the African National Congress that was going to mobilize the people for their liberation. So, yes, sir. What, what then happened on this particular day? I mean, I'm, I am imagining the first Saba on uh, Saba of, of, of 1990. Of 1990, yes. Was it allowed to happen? Now, this is the, 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 what happened. After, after the date was announced towards the end of April, and uh, having uh, many activities to mobilize and prepare for the day, then uh, the government decided to focus on a few people, the five of us and the three of them, meaning Matiba, uh, Rubia, and Raira, but Raira just joined, I think he was in Europe and he came in and joined the, the Matiba trio. Mm -hmm. uh, and the government started following them daily or every minute, if you like, mm -hmm. including the people that he had chosen as the lawyers led by Paul Mwite. And so when you look at the streets of Nairobi, you will see something funny happening, almost a drama. That every time Paul Mwite would walk out of his office, going anywhere, the police would follow him in cars, some of them uh, on foot, mm. to make sure that there were no consultations. And if there were, they were obstructed between him and Matiba. And every time Matiba went, including for his lunch, where he would walk from his office to uh, Nairobi, Nairobi Hotel, that is the Lydian Towers, mm. African, whatever they called it then. Mm. Uh, they would follow him there and try to arrest him. They are not arresting, but kissing him. One thing that Kenneth Matiba believed is the Moin government could not arrest him because him and the Moy were very close and they were doing business together. In fact, it is said, some by joke, that it is Kenneth Matiba who was coaching Moy in English or on English uh, in State House earlier on in the 60s mm. because uh, he was the permanent secretary minister of education and Moy was not quite well read. Mm. And so uh, Matiba volunteered uh, on the request of the president then and uh, Moy and another were in the class. But this other one we can spare for now. So basically, so, they, had, they had a good relationship. Uh, that's what Matiba they, believed then. They had then. a very good relationship. They had good, very good relationship. They had businesses together. They had been friends all the time. Mm. And therefore, he could not imagine that Moy would order Ascaris to arrest him. But uh, dictators have no friends, my friend. Mm. So when Saba Saba was drawing near, on the 4th of July, which was the America's uh, Independence Day, uh, they were arrested. And uh, sometimes I wonder whether the Americans uh, had anything to do with it, because apparently it did not bother them that these things were happening when they were celebrating the great day in their own motherland. However, after the 4th of uh, July 1990, we were left to coordinate. And so, John Janyona, Professor Edward Oyugi, Ngodo wa Kariuki, myself, and Kariuki Gaditu were left to coordinate and mobilize the people as they had been set up in Mombasa, Kisumu, Nakuru, the central. Kenya towns of Moranga, Nyeri, etc., you know, uh, mm. so that they could attend the party. Mm. We had uh, several buses, which some of them hired, others donated by people to bring the people to witness the launch of Kenya National Congress on the 7th. 
was it launched? And, uh, no, it was not launched. Mm. Something was topped. And this is what happened. That uh, that day, at about uh, 11 o'clock, Karyuki Gadito was to start a football match between uh, two young groups at Kamukonji. George Anyona and myself were to enter the grounds at about midday, and then others would follow. In the meantime, Godo Karyuki and Professor Oyugi were coordinating those that were coming and entering the city, and therefore things had been done. But unfortunately, when we went into the ground at about 12 midday, then uh, I, a man called Cheriot. Cheriot, I think, was an OCPD from Buruburu. And uh, a few others noticed us. And they came, obstructed us, and we thought it was not going to create a scaffold because if we created the scaffold, then we would be stopped very early. Mm. We thinned out and went back to the coordinating office, which was in Musa House. Now, Musa House is at the roundabout of Land Hills Road, mm. overlooking the Muscat Kamukunji, mm -hmm. or, if you like, at the end of Haile Serasi Avenue. Yeah. Uh, that one, at the third floor. That is where the activities were being conducted. But immediately we left the place. Then the police came into the compound and started fighting. But at that point, some of the buses from Central Kenya, Mombasa and Kisumu, had arrived at Machako's uh, bus station. And so there were a lot of people getting in to Kamukonji, and very many other people followed them. And they were singing songs. Mm -hmm. So they really attracted, and uh, it became a confrontation between the police and these fellows attending, which meant that uh, the fight on Kamukonji grounds had started. And so we transformed our activities or we changed the tact. Instead now of announcing on going to Kamukonji or forcing ourselves into Kamukonji, then we decided the best thing would be to coordinate the cities and the towns where demonstrations had been arranged. And so taking the Nakuru Highway, Nairobi Nakuru Highway, taking the uh, 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 Nairobi Thika Highway, taking the Nairobi Mombasa Highway and so forth, and all these towns there, then uh, activities started at one o'clock. And Jero, then as Kenya... I, as, as I hear you recount all of this, it could be that this happened yesterday. It happened 30 years ago. And 30, you, re yes. you, remember, you remember all of this as, it were yes, as if it were yesterday. Because I was there. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> yes. there was a reason why all of this came about. And it was very yes. interesting because a few seconds ago, you said that you were then able to coordinate across the country because there were other people who were like-minded and were ready to go yes. forward to achieve the change for which you wanted. Correct. As you look at it now in 2020 and you look back and as we celebrate this day, do yes. you think, do you believe that yes. that which you wanted to see come about was achieved the kenyan struggle my sister mm. for all the time you have known from 1950s to now has always been short changed mm. short changed somehow because the powers involved have been instructed taught and coached about how to do this and if you allow me i'll, I'll just give two statements about 1950s and 60s. When the British decided to give Kenya space for democracy, they also decided that the people that were going to do that were not the freedom fighters in the forests and those that had been detained and imprisoned. Instead, what they did was to delay releases from detentions and prisons and they put in place all the children and the chiefs to be in charge the children of chiefs and their fathers to be in charge of the program first the program was the demarcation of land the chiefs and the deals became in charge 
And the next one is the running of government, the bureaucracy created was handed by those children of chiefs who throughout the Mau Mau's time were the enemy of the people. So by the time the people were coming from detentions and prisons and the forests, they found that structure already in place. Mm -hmm. The people from the, from the forest and the detentions had promised that because African, uh, the Africans were taking government, they were not disrupted because they believed that the Africans could in fact allow for what they were fighting for. It never happened. Then Kenyatta became one of the most vicious people against the freedom fighter. Mm. When it came to Moi, and Moi detained a lot of people who were seeking multi-party politics. When it came to him, then he decided while we were in detentions and in prisons that he was going to introduce multipartism. What is it that he did? Mm -hmm. Just like they had done in 1960 mm -hmm. they brought in people, including special branch officers, to form political parties. Mm -hmm. So they allowed one, Ondinga, to form Ford. All the others were formed by suspicious characters, some of them who were informers, some of them that were special branch and very close uh, Amplico called friends mm. of Daniel Moy. So they took all the political party names, including Socialist Party, I don't know what have you, all those. So the first 15 political parties were owned by people. By the time we were released from detentions and prisons, mm. those political parties were already in place. And any of us proposing or suggesting that we form Polit a political party of our own. The people out there had already been poisoned. What we fought for has come, and therefore we cannot allow for another one. And if you do, then we will reject it. Mm. So that is what happened. What is it that happened then when Moy was leaving? Something else very interesting. And you are going to see it replayed in this country. Mm. He decided that the only character that was going to be the person to take over from him was an amateur. A person that would not be able to understand a political statement, mm. who did not understand the philosophies, who did not even understand history, but was going to be coached so that he became a beautiful creature of Daniel Moy, and that is our president, Uru Kenyatta, and he knows it. He met me in the parliament. He met me in the parliament when Makto had been uh, asked to step down. Mm. He was uh, nominated to take that place, and so there he was, timid, shy, <laughs> and, and so he is our president. What is it that he is going to do? Simply to make sure that he protects that which had been achieved by the system mm. from 1961 to Moy's day. And oh, he has yes. done it very well. And he has done it very well. But remember mm. that there is a Kipaki state. Mm. Now, people are talking about the dynasties, friends, dynasties in Kenya. We don't have very many dynasties. It is Kenyatta dynasty ruling this country. And the only thing that is different from them is that from 1948 to this day, the Ondinga family, and Ondingas have been very close friends of mine, but reflecting back, you can actually see that from 1948 to this day, that family is the one that has profited the democratic value of opposition so that the international communities would always say that Kenya is a democracy because there is a government ruling and that government is the Kenyatta value and formation and the opposition is the Ondinga value. So what do we mean here? Simply this, that we cannot achieve it with such hypocritical programs happening here. And our country has been created to be a hungry country where no food is. Mm. Two, it has been created to be a poor country so that the people have been promoted and encouraged to drink. So they are hungry, they are poor, they are drunk, and they are 
good very easily. Let me take you back to that time. Um, what do you say? Political parties were formed when a number of you were in detention, yeah. but Ford yes. was allowed to to go into registration. Because yes, because of their program. So it became a huge movement. Ford, uh, Matiba came yes. back from uh, from abroad where he was undergoing treatment, and all of you were in Ford. When we yes. look back at that juggernaut of a political party and the immediate mm. splinter, what made it start breaking apart? Uh, this way. The, remember, like what I have said, that a lot of people came in who were not serious. When Ford was formed, very many people from Kanu uh, got into Ford. Some of them not serious at all, mm. led by a Kanu Secretary General called uh, Peter Oro Aringo. Mm. And uh, when they came there, after about one or two months, they started complaining again and running back to where they had come from, mm -hmm. save for a few, a few people. And that scared a lot of Kenyans. In the meantime, there is a group of Kenyans within the movement that call themselves the Young Turks. Mm. And the Young Turks appeared like they were preparing themselves to take over, which is correct anyway, because ambition is correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, that when they were going to take over, they wanted to change that which had been done by the six elders or the nine elders mm -hmm. so that it fits them. And one of the things they proposed was this, that uh, we were not going to conduct presidential nominations from the grassroots or at the grassroots we were going to form college cities mm. where a few delegates from the country would come in to decide who the presidential candidate should be. Yeah. And this was motivated by the fact that because Kennedy Matiba was coming in now from London, they thought that he would have a greater following that would take away a few votes from Jaramogo Winga Wandinga. Mm. And uh, Kennedy Matiba was not coming to be president. He was coming to join Ford, but to be a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. So because of that understanding and that is stand by the young tax within Ford, then at one point, led by Martin Shikuku and George Mbenge, Herman Bamaris and others in Kitui, they said, no, we cannot change the Ford constitution because we would like that nominations are carried at grassroots, that is at sublocation level. Mm. And that really is what is played for. And there was such tug, tug, tug of war mm. about that that then uh, the Jeramogan group decided to stay in what they call the Ajib House, and uh, myself, Peter Nyang Nyong, and uh, Oyugi had been asked, and Ngodo Karioki had been asked to open a secretariat at the Modidi House, so which had been donated by Jim Nambaru. Mm. And when we did that, uh, assisted by Meko Kenya, when we did that, then uh, Matipa arrived and he decided that was going to be where he would sit. And Jeramugi said that he would sit in Anjip House. And the two of them quarreled about that. Mm -hmm. And the split happened on a very <laughs> frimsing ground. But it did. Looking and back, everybody you know, appeared to celebrate. Looking back, Jeru, um, from mm -hmm. that point, uh, yes. with hindsight, was that a good move to go ahead up to a point of breaking up such a huge movement that you had you see you see it was very bad to split ford but it became inevitable because of the forces involved mm. in fact when i look back myself i still see the hand of moi in it because later on Martin Shikuku, my very good friend, said, mm -hmm. Wamekura Kaugari, yeah. 8,000 Amoy, and the Yaoke. Yes. Right? Yeah. While on the other side, one year later, uh, Jeramugi Oginga Ondinga was saying, Moy ni kama Twiga, mm -hmm. he's like a giraffe, mm -hmm. and he sees very far, and therefore, let us go back to him and uh, be able to make one Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, those two characters are the ones that created the division. 
And these are the two people that are saying, Kumbe, they have been cooperating with Moi. And therefore, the country went back to where we were in 1960. It doesn't sound to me like it was an ideological difference. It sounds like it was, there, an, it there, was an ego difference. There was no ideology in Ford. Everybody was there. If you talk about ideologies, we have about six ideologies in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, there is none that was at play. Mm -hmm. Nobody was talking about land. Nobody was talking about the poor. Nobody was talking about the environment. We were simply saying, change Moi out. the leadership. Eh, Moi ende. So, agukuwa na hii mambo ya ati filosofia yetu ni fulani. There was really nothing like that. Because Shikuku stood for something, uh, my friend uh, Oginga stood for something, Kenneth Matipa was standing for, for creating riches, mm -hmm. I don't know, the, all these things. Mm -hmm. So, so there was nothing ideological. So, nevertheless, nevertheless, my sister, before you ask the question, that in fact is what the Kenyans are supposed to decipher. Mm -hmm. What is it that we follow in political parties? Mm -hmm. What is it that we follow in individuals? In what do they believe mm -hmm. in? Ama ni kutuchanganya tu kama karanga ule ya Tanzania. Yeah, so Mutimishi, um, I have so many questions, but you're... All of them. I, I'll only ask one because, um, <laughs> because of yeah. time. Yes. Um, you're talking about uh, change. Moi must yes. go as this unifying uh, call yes. or, or for, yes. for that time. You can yes. see where we are. And I think you've given us a very good backdrop to understand yes. the, the mindset and the interests of, of Uhuru Kenyatta vis-a-vis -vis the Kenyatta dynasty. What is yes. our rallying call now that um, we can use to get Kenyans on board? Because it seems it, that things are very, uh, very dark. We've lost a lot of ground. Dark, and people aren't good. able, don't seem able to see uh, as clearly as people could see that time across the board. What could be that, the rallying call now that can bring yeah. people across from various that, ideology, yeah. religious, business, is yeah thank you very much personally what i see and uh, by the way let me tell you i am slightly happy about what i see and the reason why i say i'm slightly happy is because for all those 30 and more years we always told the people the kind of leaders they should choose mm. and instead of listening to us some of them have called us you know, uh, Vinyangarika. I don't know what Vinyangarika means, but uh, <laughs> that is what they call us. Some of them actually throw stones at us because they have been told so. But now they are suffering, suffering, suffering without <laughs> eternity. <laughs> right? And that, according to me, that suffering is what mobilizes them to form some little quorum that they can be able to push what I am now calling mm -hmm. change for posterity. If there is going to be any rallying call, according to me, there cannot be anything else than fighting for posterity because everybody fought for his own mm -hmm. and it has not produced any good result. Yep. We can only fight so that the future generations can benefit from what we leave behind now. It's and so, and so, what I am saying mm. is that uh, we must fight for change for posterity. That time it was more it must go. Now it must be for posterity. You're giving us very interesting insights. Today being a very important day, the seventh day of the seventh month of the year is Saba Saba. We are looking back yes. 30 years of the Saba Saba movement, what you started those 30 years ago, giving us the context of what was happening. And now we are looking yes. at leadership. Still having the conversation with Njeru Katangu, Mtumishi Njeru Katangu, Ford, Ken Ford Asili Secretary General, um, former MP for Runyenges, and a man who was among the, those who led the first Saba Saba rallies. As we went into the break, Mtumishi, you said, you yes. know, one of the things that now we need to be focusing on is change for posterity. Yes. And, and this change for posterity is with a realization that all that clamor and all the change that we were pushing for, it went into, it was, it was clouded by personal ambition. Yes. Even by the very many people who were in the leading lights of the, the change, the push for multipartism. Yes. So what is the shape and form of this new leader who's going to come 
and take us to this new posterity without <laughs> the, the kind of ambitions that marred the first 30 years. Yes. Now, remember that uh, every generation is 30 years split into 10, 10, 10. A generation has three decades. Mm -hmm. And in this generation, from my time to now, that generation has really been deprived and denied of information, of national values, and even of family values. And one of the biggest problems that we have in Kenya today is that that particular generation does not see anything but the self-needs. They are the ones that are looking for shortcuts. They believe they can be rich without hand work. They actually believe they can be without an education. Some of them have been sent to universities, and those universities, they look for people to write their thesis and uh, answers and what have you. What is happening here is that uh, the Moi regime deflocked people of determination and commitment, which means that uh, as we are today, Kenyans are going to be seeking a liberator, to liberate them. Kenyans are going to be looking for a savior, but where does the savior come from when they cannot see one themselves? You can only hope that there is going to be an emerging figure, a character of commitment and somebody who loves people mm -hmm. that can be able to offer something at least to release uh, the people here and the research take their lives. Mr. Kadangu, are Some you of, saying that the current crop of leaders do not represent the form and shape of such a leader? I don't see them. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Uh, remem remember this. I have, I have personally worked with all of them. Yeah. All. And I say all. And they are my witnesses. And I can tell you that there has been a lot of time wasting looking for money and the property mm -hmm. that none of them has been able to sit and concentrate to look at what the state and society mm -hmm. requires, not for five years, but for 100 or 200 years. The reason why Kenya lags behind, and it is the most primitive country politically, in Africa, is that uh, from the time yeah, that we come walked on, out of the big war, yes, <laughs> let me, let me, you are asking me questions, uh, please explain yes. our primitivity. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me give my statement. You are yes. viewers. Uh -huh. You can give viewers at an appropriate time. Now yeah. the question is mine. That uh, we have got one of the most backward political societies in this Africa that has come from a freedom war that has seen the democratic struggle, whose leaders have been detained and detained and eliminated, eliminated by way of assassinations, and it does not tickle this society that something must be done, that we must look for an appropriate character. The social institutions have been diluted to give zero programs, where the education program alone changes every 10 years, making the society a society that cannot agree in anything, not even in research, because each one of us has got a different approach. Mm -hmm. What so kind of society is this? Listen, the kind of person that you must look for, and you have got the obligation to do it, don't run away. Mm -hmm. You have got the obligation to do it, because without a good political leader, there is nothing that will work for you. You have only been left with about four families, which constitute about 30,000 people, and those are the owners of property, the owners of land, and the owners of every institution. They guide you like blind people. Wow. You know, now uh, we are wondering how to come back at that one. Ah. You had better can, come back. Yes, can I? You had better come back. Yes, I want to ask uh, this question. <laughs> Ask it, Mr. Kalangu, you sound to me like a diehard idealist. No. It's because I live in this country and I am a witness to it. So Where are you people, saying that even yes. as a politician, you do not believe in idealism? 
You know, I say this because I, I think be, idealism I, is positive. I don't I think believe, it's negative. I, 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 I believe in idealism. I know what ideas are, and I know the people who get stuck on ideas. That is not Jero Katango. If I get stuck on ideas, I will not be talking with you. Many, many of our people are not around. That is why maybe you called me, mm. because others are not there. I am saying this, uh, and uh, I'm not a young boy also, mm. so I know, I know from where we've come, and I know where I am. Where the country we are talking about, Kenya, has got about 4 million people in uh, Nairobi, and only about 850,000 can be able to earn something. All the others are the independent. Yeah. And it does not worry you? Mm -hmm. Does it worry the politician? Yeah. Is it okay for us to say that Kenya is one of the main economic powerhouses, economic hums, and uh, you have got about 3.2 million dependents on 800 in the capital city? Thank you. And That's you say I'm an idealist. Uh, uh, how exactly do you arrive at these figures, uh, Mwishimiwa? How would you not arrive to it? Right now we are in a corona system. Yes, we right? are. The corona period has uh, witnessed the Kenyans saying, open it up, we we'll go home. We cannot be able to eat, we cannot be able to pay rent, we cannot be able to have our children around here because they are crying all over. Can you allow us to go home? What is it that the government did? They even did not listen to that. Mm. Open up so that the people can go home and after they've gone home, close it. Those that cannot go, offer them transport. Mm -hmm. Don't create a slaughterhouse in your city. And yeah. they didn't. Mm. Yeah, in fact, I Politicians, the leaders need to think. It's not to watch people. We are not to find your, your show. I think you're, you're provoking us because we have become accustomed um, to injustice we have rationalized and we expect it and we actually accept it. Um, yeah. 82.3 of um, employment in Kenya is in the informal sector. That's a reality. Right. And we yeah. have, and like you say, contrasted to that, we are an economic powerhouse and, and uh, you know, economic hub on the continent. But, it, yeah. it, you know, and we are a middle, lower middle income country, but really we are not. Um, and and we not. have accepted this. So I think I fully agree with you. And um, just yesterday we were talking about, um, Wandi and Joya has been talking about our education system and yes. how it has removed the ability for Kenyans to be critical, to be critical, politically <laughs> aware critical and to be critical thinkers. And, and, yes. and I'll give a personal uh, a testimony to this. Our daughter is um, yes. in the at the African Leadership Academy in in South Africa. She okay. got herself a scholarship, and it's a yes. school that is promoting young people to think about solutions for their country. And in fact, you study there, you have to then come and work in Africa. Uh, you don't. Yes. They don't train you, and then you go and you don't take go your knowledge out there. Work. And yes. as as Kenyans, we can see the difference between our Kenyan students and the and the South African uh, uh, students and the right. Nigerian Good. students in terms yes. of political political awareness and appreciation and even the the depth of understanding of the issues. Um, you know, being able to interpret things politically, and yes. you know, this is these are the students who are already. Uh, directed towards political understanding, but when you put right. them with their peers, you can see the yes. deficit in terms yes. of our education yes. system. So I um, completely yeah, yeah. agree with you, and our students are in the private, coming from a private background, more so yes. the public school where kids have are being taught by many teachers with a very shallow curriculum, no time for developing that critical thoughts. And as parents, we are not teaching it. So I completely agree, uh, whatever our situation is not sustainable. But I don't know whether True. we can afford to wait for this uh, messiah. messiah who you're saying isn't even there. We are very excited about some of the candidates who have put their names forward. But Sorry. we can't just, you can't surely be telling us, but, but sit Wanjiro, and wait. But Wanjiro, how <laughs> then do Kenyans like your daughter manage with our system, which, as you say, is maribund, dead, or disabled, still manage to capture a position that is internationally competed for 
And apart from that, there are many other Kenyans who also manage to get scholarships in other universities abroad and proceed to excel there with this debt yes. system. How and do you manage to do that? People in those, city, people in those other systems will say they are really impressed by the quality. Yes. Okay. Education it's is okay. not about knowledge. Kenyans have uh, a yeah. lot of knowledge. Anywhere you go, you'll yes. be told Kenyans have knowledge. Education yes. is about I, criticality and ability to bring yes. solutions and Kenyans are falling short. Wanjiro, That's the, the system of yes. education in the universities abroad are very stimulus response based, which means you have to think. Mm. You don't regurgitate what you've absorbed or what you've internalized. There's, there's, Why are you making an assumption that abroad has better education yeah. than ours? Oh, look no, at look at me. 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 Look at Please come in, sir. Yes. You know, I don't think that my sister out there is uh, talking about how Kenyan education is <laughs> so backward and so forth. But there is something she is saying that uh, when you are going to be looking at your country politically. Kenyans have been denied it because from the time that Moy came in 1978, he changed the approach to political education and brought the government education, meaning that in the universities and all schools, what you will be taught is about government. What is government? Government is a small little thing within a state. When we talk about political science, we look at the state and the society. When you are talking about the government, you are talking about, I think, the fourth item of state, meaning that we have denied you about three things. That itself simply means when you go and sit with others, as they talk about the state, mm -hmm. you'll be mumbling something about the government mm -hmm. and you cannot fit in. You know, yeah. and that is what she is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to these other subjects, for example, when you talk about IT, IT has attracted almost all the young people in Kenya. They actually don't think there is anything else that uh, should be learned other than IT. Mm. So if you, if you excelled in IT in Kenya and you went to South Africa, to Germany, to Britain, to America, to whatever place, you will tick because you have done it committedly as yourself, not because the system so promoted it. It's because the young character mm. has been attracted to that IT so much that he has gone out looking for facts and ideas about success on that line. Are you saying that so that you system is still being perpetuated in our education system? So it's not perpetuated. I mean, nobody is working to have Kenya excel educationally. Who? Who is, who is doing that? And, uh, and uh, most of the papers that you mark are not even written by those students. They are written by the lecturers and they pay. And yet, despite this, Kenya has developed a reputation as being the hub for ensuring that pe people who do not wish to write their own papers, people who do not wish to take the time to study and research for their own thesis, they come to Kenyans to do precisely that. And these are people who have learned in this Kenya, same Kenya, system. Kenya, Kenya is the one that is spreading that and which is perpetuated not by the Kenyan education structure, but by the lecturers. It is the lecturers in the Kenyan universities who have been making money writing papers for others. And those others, if you ask any of them any question about what their papers uh, contain, at least to go slightly deeper hmm. than the sentence or the statement, they will not do it. So if we look because at the, don't, mean, you know. all of all of this, I mean, from the, the, what set the premise for this uh, where this debate that we are currently in is that there's a leadership or there's a lack of proper governance and leadership in this country. And you said yes. that, you know, you're looking at the current crop of leaders and you can't see anybody who's going to take Kenya over um, over this uh, 
to the to the to the promised land as it were all right if, when you look for a leader so, wanjiro I've, I've had you called wanjiro eh? it's not so wanjiro the wanjiro is the other one this is uh, this is not the other one is called Ndu. <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> so okay. my question here because if, if uh, for me if we if, conversations that have to be crafted towards solutions and then if we're yeah. saying now that if the current <laughs> crop if the current crop you're saying that you know there really is no you can't see anybody what then you know, needs when, to be done because you know if, you if, talk, we look, if, if, if i can just finish jerry was that we looked yeah. if you looked at what you saw was missing yeah. what you felt was going to bring the attention of people was then a pro rated through the entire country yeah. and that is what brought some kind of change yeah. i am not the, the one to advocate <laughs> for violence or anything like that but for no. me to see that there's any kind of change it has yeah. to be at that level at that protest level to say that if what yeah. we are seeing is not working how are you yeah. going to get people to take atten um, uh, to 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 pay attention and to do something mm. about it Yes, they, 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 I think there are basically three ways that you can be able to get a good leader. When you wait for people to announce their intentions, sometimes you get the wrong person because the wrong person from the time that uh, parliament became a good paymaster, the people have become attracted to the salary and the allowance. Mm. Number two, if you elect those people, after they have made the allowances or they have repaid themselves the campaign sweat, then they forget everything else that they have been doing other than to accumulate. Mm. In the villages, and I repeat, the villages know their children, they know their leaders, they know their shining stars, they know. They know the people that represent them in cooperative movements beautifully. They know the people that have run the school committee programs beautifully. They know. Mm. But let me tell you, most of the good leaders from the villages or from our, our, our communities fear to come to the center of political work because Kenyans have dismissed the politics as one evil Dirty. And number three, <laughs> people that are simply criminals. They look at politicians as murderers, as rapists, as thieves, as, 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 and that does not motivate a good heart and good soul. It doesn't. So because are you saying that say, the people... People are... say, sir, people mm. say, sir, that if I go and take a political leadership slot, I'll be dismissed as a thief yep. and I don't want to mess my name. Mm. The people in the villages, when they're electing their leaders, are they not um, having a conversation with the people that they want, they would like to see leading them in higher levels of government in those political positions? Because you're saying the, these are the same people who elect the cattle dip chairman. They're the same ones who elect the school, the school boards. Yes, yes, yes. So, Those that are elected the school boards and uh, the cattle dibs do not pay at all. But those people that are elected into the local governments and, uh, and, uh, and the MPs mm. must pay. And the people don't vote until they are paid. They say this. Mimi sipea ni kura yangu baka nilipo. Sababu weta kienda naenda kutavutia bibi yake na watoto. Right. So it, sound, <laughs> now, it sounds to me, what, what, kind, what kind of a leader are you going to get when... He has paid you. It sounds to me, Jero, that this villager then is yes. the one that needs to have a moment of reawakening. So that well, they see a political leader as an extension of the cattle dip chairman, as an extension of the local cooperative movement leader, as an extension of every other leader in the local community. That is going to be so, but even the other thing that must be done mm. is to make sure that the laws in this country do not favor the rich and the corrupt. Mm. Mm. Remember that when you are going to look at your laws, and I would like you to take your own that controls your media, if you look at that law and you go and look at the Constitution, the two of them do not tally some place and that is the biggest problem that our country has mm -hmm. that 
anybody using our laws anasema mimi natumia sheria lakini ile sheria anatumia is a sheria against the people right and uh, that is the sheria that we must focus on how does our law protect and safeguard the aspirations yeah. of the people whether it is about leadership whether it is about riches and economics and finances whether it is about agriculture and what how does it save them if you look at your constitution and you look at the laws you will see the lacunas created and it is those lacunas that the leaders use to manipulate the mind of the citizen you know so mr really Galangu, about the village it's all about the village and bro let me tell you that if you look at the five years or whatever years that we were in parliament you look at uh, at uh, the motions and the bills that we passed in parliament there is something you are going to see and we did things that made even can we serve to be diluted in the uh, static uh, thinking mm. that you know that is actually absolutely there, true but so i want to take you back to the issue of education mr kalango right yes, now but, uh, there the is biggest... something i wanted to say yes so, so that you, i don't forget yes that uh, the cdf that you are talking about in kenya we introduced it ourselves in the year 2001 yes you did that uh, the thing that you talk about the hiv and aids program which moi had refused to recognize from 1980 84 you know we introduced it ourselves as a program mm. when you look at the roads board we introduced it and because some of the kanu people accepted to agree with us and when i say as i'm talking about orengo katango mukisa kitui and karioki karoe mm. murioki karoe when in, they decided to agree with us moi sacked them led by uh, andrew kipton mm. You know, and so a representative of the people wants to look at the laws, which law is going to benefit these people, the people. you know, and work out a program, create business in the house to make sure that that law is either changed or introduced another one. Mr. Gadangu, come to education here. Our biggest foreign exchange earner in this country are called remittances. Yes. And you cannot have remittances unless you have a powerful human resource base, meaning people yeah. are educated to the point where they can work abroad and they yeah. can send money back into the country <coughs> yes and many of oh, them yeah. are products <laughs> yeah. of this same educational education system, system. Country. yes points me oh you 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 you, you, you <laughs> want me to comment about it i will tell you yeah. i have i have lived in britain i have lived in germany i have lived in italy I knew a bit of Paris and Brussels and I have stayed in India for three months every year for about six years. Let me tell you, the people you are trying to be so proud about, I know them. That people in Europe have achieved what you call the old age, almost unproductive. And they are looking for labor, not from Kenya, from across the world. So that you will find a lot of Caribbeans in Europe. You find Africa is there. What kind of jobs do they perform? The very first one is looking after the old people. And some of those old people are looked after by people who came from Kenya as degree holders. Yeah. Those are the people are, that are, I'm, 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 afraid, I'm afraid I've got to have to cut you short because we're coming to the top of the hour. You, you may, you may, but there is that thing you asked is so important. Mm. The remittances are not are not sent here by people that are in charge of programs in the United States. They are sent here by people who have gone out there and are serving as soldiers. Because they could not fit in here, they go there, they are conscripted into the armed forces, they are sent to Iraq and what have you, blah, 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 blah. They are actually the slave pharaohs mm -hmm. for the United States. Those are the people that are sending the, the money here. Don't be proud about it. Because when you are proud about it, then it means that we are actually demeaning our capacities and our dignity. Hmm. Debatable, sir, but uh, let's have that debate another day. I'm with you. Another day. <laughs>